fruit trees are one of the first trees to bloom as spring starts to take over. Around March is when peach and nectarine trees begin to show some color and soon burst into pink petals here in Maryland. While the cherry trees typically receive all the fame and media coverage around Washington DC, peach tree blossoms are still a sight to behold. And while we gardeners may like the way the flowers look, we are generally more interested in rooting for favorable weather to increase pollination during this crucial week of bloom. Just a few days later, we were in luck, as the peach tree branches exploded with fully open blooms. Good weather encouraged me forward in hoping that this year I could get a taste of the first peaches to grow from trees I had planted. The first thing I did when I got to this place was to plant some fruit trees including these peach and nectarine trees. Today the blossoms are really open and receptive for pollen and I do see a few bumblebees zooming around pollinating and some other pollinators. They're going to be essential for this plant to actually set fruit. Hopefully we won't have a late frost like we've had in the previous years but we can't really count on that. It could very much happen. It, we're already in April, but we've had it for the past three years, and it's kind of destroyed fruit production for the area. I hope to get these peaches and nectarines pollinated. I did find out that some two trees, two extra trees that were already planted here, are either peaches or nectarines, so they're in the family. Hopefully they can help create more diversity so that there's more pollination happening and good fruit set. We'll see. The peach trees were showing signs of vigor, but I must admit that I could have been a bit more hands-on and smart in taking care of them. I had planted them in during a previous early spring and didn't quite calculate how close they were to the neighboring trees behind them. That was starting to show potential problems. Well, this tree is falling over. There's two reasons. One more obvious one is that a tree fell over it, so it leaned and it didn't break. Thankfully, it's still alive. I don't know how sustainable it is for it to assume this position. But the other reason why it's doing this, or maybe the main reason, is that it already wanted to go this way because of the light. There are way too many tall trees in the back that forced it to come this way. Perhaps I should have planted it a little bit more, maybe five or even ten feet further on or trim the trees here to really get more sun onto fruit trees. You really cannot skimp with sun exposure in fruit trees. Especially peaches, they love to be sun kissed. That's how they de develop their best flavor. They were facing south on the slope, so I had gotten that right, but I had underestimated the shade cast by the canopy of trees behind it. If you are planning to plant a fruit tree, it would be best to investigate and mark up the ideal location in the middle of summer when all the leaves are out. We did end up having great weather during flowering, which translated to the setting of several fruit just a few weeks later. My hope of getting a harvest was increasing, as the tiny fruit slowly engorged their flesh covered by hoary fuzz. But I knew things could quickly turn for the worse since I had problems with insects destroying the peaches in the previous year, with bite marks that oozed sap. I decided to test out an idea that could maybe prevent that from happening this time. It was an idea I had picked up in a gardening book once. I'll be back right after this commercial to share this unusual experiment. If you're loving the video and would like to help me produce more, you can purchase an original painting from my Etsy shop or support me through Patreon. Your direct support is the reason why I have been able to produce two episodes a week during the spring, so thank you. Ever since I was a teenager, I always liked to read gardening books, and that's where I found many tips. I've been having problems with the peaches, where they seem to be attacked by some kind of insect as they're growing, and then later on, they're they're just not 
edible. They, they may have worms or they don't develop well. One of the tips or hacks I've found in books is to use pantyhose for as a barrier so that the insects don't lay eggs and don't attack the fruits as they're developing. I haven't tried it. I don't know how feasible it is, but it's something to consider. It's, after all, it would be an organic way of controlling it instead of using the typical industry standard um, chemical sprays that are just commonplace in, in raising fruit. But, of, of course, this is not an old solution. Pantyhose, nylon pant pantyhoses were invented in the 30s, if I'm not mistaken, or 40s. So it's a bit of a new thing. They are a plastic, basically. And you do know how I feel about plastic. However, these are pantyhoses that were um, being thrown out. My mother had these. And why not try and see if it's a suitable solution to producing beautiful juicy peaches. Not all garden hacks turn out to be true or effective, so I wanted to test it out. This book actually only recommended pantyhose to support growing melons suspended away from the soil. I don't remember where I got the idea of using it to protect peaches, but it was worth trying anyways. It's always exciting to find new tips and hopefully find ones that actually work. And if it does, I'm more than glad to share with you guys. I can say I have several years of experience growing mainly vegetables at home. I also like to read about the subject and that's how I've compiled my gardening experience. But when it comes to fruit growing, I'm a novice. I'm just starting to learn more, partially because growing fruit trees successfully is way more complicated than vegetables and it also takes several years to see results. I've had good results with figs and shrubs like blueberries, and I had great harvests out of a resilient pear variety, but growing peaches and apples have been failures up until now. Part of the reason is that they require lots of sprays, and I just don't like the high maintenance complicated plants. Upon closer inspection, I am not sure if I already am too late to do this process, because I already see some damage in the fruit possibly by some kind of an insect. But there are other fruit around that seem to be perfect, so maybe I have hope. We'll see. So the first thing I need to do is just get my pantyhose and cut a length that will be big enough to accommodate a few fruit. I'm not gonna put it in all of them because this is a test. No, I wanna see if the ones that were protected were actually protected and had any benefit to that. But I'm gonna choose places where there are several of them growing and then I'll tie the, the ends with string and hopefully as the fruit grows, the mesh expands and it won't constrict the growth of the fruit and won't necessarily block too much light either. As far as I know, peaches do need sunlight to develop a good flavor, but I'm an amateur when it comes to fruit anyways. If you are an expert on growing peaches, you may be perplexed by my shenanigans. I sure had to do more research on what was causing the damage to my peaches. Peaches can be afflicted by several fungal and bacterial diseases, as well as annoying pests like the plum curculio and the oriental fruit moth. Both of these insects have life cycles that include overwintering in soil and fallen fruit, and reinfecting the new fruit in early spring by laying larvae in it. Breaking their life cycle is conventionally done with scheduled pesticide sprays. The pantyhose idea would be more of a physical barrier to them laying eggs. That is, if the thin pantyhose was even an effective barrier. I wasn't sure. But there was some method to my madness. As I learned later on, there is a product called Clemson Bags, produced and developed by Clemson University, that does precisely what I'm trying to do here. But they do recommend applying them after petal drop, and they say that the plant needs to be sprayed prior to bagging. They also claim it helps prevent brown molds that can seriously affect peaches. 
maybe I would try their bags in the future. Also, I'm sure that thinning out the fruit is recommended. I didn't do that partially because I hate the idea of willingly throwing more than half my crop away. Eventually the plant does that naturally, but it may affect harvest. Would I be able to taste my first peach? If you want to know what happened to my experiment, don't miss my next episode. See you there.